What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the YouTube Barber Academy. And today, today, we're going to talk about what to do when nobody came. Top of the morning to you, Pages Styles. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for jumping in my lives, as always. So, uh, you know, let's address the elephant in the room. And I was going to say this one time. King of the East, baby. We're the king of the East and the king of the AFC. So I'm just I'm just gonna talk my shit right now. Right now, just just so that I can get this out of the way. So I don't have to talk about it again later in the live, but I might. But uh yeah. Josh Allen leaped the bitch like a gazelle. And we are sitting at the top of the AFC. We got two wins now over the Chiefs, the tiebreaker, everything. So let's get it. Alright, I got that out of the way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This might be a rated R show. It might be a rated R show. All right, we're on our way to work. Uh, got a big day going. And you know, there's times where you don't feel like going to work. But God, today is not one of them. I can't wait for every fucking Chiefs fan to walk through that door and hang their head in shame as they look at all my Bills memorabilia all over the walls. So anyways, let's get to the live, man. Let's get to the topic. We got a whole bunch of people jumping in here right away. And I thank you guys for it. All right. So yesterday, I did an event, and uh, I had to drive up to Sarasota. It was pretty cool. It was for Salon Centric. They had a big Airstream bus, and I cut hair in that, and that was pretty dope. But the topic of today's discussion, as you've seen it in the headline, is what if nobody came? So maybe you just left the shop because you felt like, you know, just today wasn't happening. And somehow you thought that tomorrow would be better. What productive thing did you do? Probably nothing. Probably just laid around and felt bad for yourself. Maybe you blamed the shop owner. Maybe you blamed all these other things for why you're not busy. But you decided to leave because nobody came. Or maybe you compare yourself to others. And you look at how busy they are and you think, man, why am I not busy? Man, I can't wait till I'm that busy. I'll just wait it out. I'll just wait it out and it'll happen. No, it won't. I'm telling you right now. No, it won't. Waiting it out is not the right answer. All right? So what do we do if we're in the shop all day and nobody comes? Nobody comes, all right? I'm gonna take a quick segment. You guys listen, you guys go ahead and drop it in the comments what you think the answer, what you should be doing if nobody came all day. Now, to be honest, if that happened to me, I got all kinds of ideas, all right? So he's saying, what's my top three, clop, my, my top three clippers out there right now and that was asked by Giovanni. So I will go ahead and I will answer that whilst I check out some of your guys' replies. And top of the morning to you guys, if you guys are just jumping in here, I appreciate all your smiling faces and thank you for becoming members. And I'm doing my best to drop more and more membership material. All right? So top three clippers in my current rotation right now, I think number one is probably for me is the Sabre. And uh, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to make a video actually following up on a, on a couple of these things. I would say the Sabre, and then I would list the Apex, and then I would list the Rebel. Just for me, personally, these things are just hard to beat. All, all three of those are just really hard to beat. Rebel gives you an incredible amount of value. You have to spend a little bit, a little bit more when it comes to the Sabre, when it comes to uh, the Apex, because they, they come with fade blades, and uh, I'm not a fan. So, you know, the first thing that's got to go is that fade blade, and then I'll go ahead, I'll throw on that that vapor, vapor blade, and I'll go ahead and I'll throw on the taper blade on another one. What's up? What's up, Ra Raju? Raju, if I'm saying that right. Paige says, don't make the video until the instinct is re <laughs> released. No, no, the video I'm making doesn't have to do with, like, like the best clipper. But, uh, yes, the Instinct has a vector motor. And for those of you guys who don't know, um, what it does is it senses how much power you need. It delivers more when you need it and less when you don't. So that's that's the idea. Uh, Spirit Light, he asked about the boosted. I, I would say that that's the exact same thing as the Rebel minus the blade. So, uh, essentially, you could put boosted... In, in the top three with with that as well. All right, thank you for the question. Thank you for the question. Let's return 
to the point of today. So if nobody came. So you spend all this time making posts, making videos, trying to advertise yourself, letting people know when you're going to be at the shop. You're going to be here from 9 a.m. You're going to be here till 5 p.m. You're going to do it five days a week. We're going to make it very easy for you to reach me, even though most people probably get out at 5 if you're 30, 40, 20, however old you are. These people work, don't they? And many of them, many of them don't get out until 5, 6, 7 o'clock. So maybe you need to have a look at what your demographic is because if your demographic is seniors, well, they can come whenever the hell they feel like it. But if you're going to be advertising to your peers, you want to be the best, you want to do the best type of haircuts, then maybe you need to look at your schedule and you need to think like, hey, do I really want to come in at 9? What if I came in at 12 and I stayed till 7? Would that help me? But that's not the point. That's not the point of this. Whatever your schedule is, whatever you decide it to be, you need to stick to it. You need to stick to it, and it's more important than you can imagine. Because you spent all this time advertising for yourself, making all these posts, talking about it, doing all the good stuff that you're supposed to be doing. And then when a client comes in, he says, hey, where's Joe? I'd like to get my hair cut by Joe. I see all his posts online, this and that. Oh, Joe ain't here. Oh, when's he come in? I thought he was supposed to be here till 5. He said he would be here till 5. Yeah, he left early today. But it's only one. There's four more hours in the day. So I'm going to tell you guys this. Throughout all my experience, the most impactful moments of the shop, of my clientele building that's ever happened to me, they came early in the morning and they came usually after I was, I was supposed to leave. After I was supposed to leave. Guy walks in, never been there before. Hey man, you guys got time for a haircut? I know it's late, I'm sorry. I, I just never been here before. I just noticed that you guys are closing. What you gonna do? You gonna look at him, tell him, fuck off, dude. I've been here all day. Where you been? No, you're not gonna do that. That will create a bad experience. That will create something for him to never wanna come back again. How about this? Just flat out, no, we don't have time for you. Not good. So there's, there's, Really, the best way to handle it is, of course you can, man. Treat your first like your last. Have a seat, man. Whatever I had to do, that shit could wait because I sat here all day and didn't make shit. Whatever I had to do, that shit could wait. And this dude's going to become a supporter of yours because he's going to say, you know what, man? They were closing up and this guy treated me like gold. He went out of his way. He took care of my haircut. He's going to tell his friends about it. And it's just going to be a good, positive experience that reflects on you and the rest of your staff, period. So... When you, when you do something like that. But the worst answer you could give somebody. Let's change the scenario a little bit. Let's say this dude comes in at 3 o'clock. When you are going to be here for a couple more hours. But you are just jam-packed busy. Right? We got clients and clients and clients. And nobody can take this guy. Right? Just It just can't happen for whatever reason. Nobody wants to stay late. Everybody's kind of looking to be a little lazy. Everybody's trying to get out. And let's just call it what it is because that's what it is. When I don't take another customer... It's not because I can't. It's because I won't. I won't. There's certain things in my life that I would rather do than cut your hair. But at the same time, I'm not building anymore. I'm trying to get rid of these people. I'm in a different I'm, I'm in a different place. I'm in a different place in my career. If I was building, you think I'd tell somebody, "No, I don't got time for you?" Hey, you fucking crazy. I spent all this time and all this money and all this effort, and when the money finally walks in, I'm going to say, "No. You got me fucked up." Rated already. Sorry. But that's the truth right there. Like, that shit pisses me the fuck off. You ain't built up. You ain't got your whole fucking schedule full. You ain't got everything figured out. And when the money walks in, you're going to walk out? Get the fuck out of here, man. What kind of shit is that? You're trying to be broke for the rest of your life. That's what that is. That's what that is. So I don't want to hear that shit. But when you're like me and you're in a different position, one thing you can always do. All right? One thing you can always do for a customer is you got to make them feel wanted period. Whether you have time for them or you don't. So let me show you how to handle that. Let me show you how to handle that situation. Client walks in. Truthfully, nobody can take him. For good reasons, whatever, nobody can take him. What are you going to tell him? What are you going to tell him? No? Just can't do it. Can't do it today. Sorry. Guy walks out. Fuck this place. Well, how about if you go to him like this? What if you go to him like this? You say, listen, man, we are, we are 
appointments. We are all super booked up today and nobody can, we, we just, we, we can take you on Monday. So name a specific time, date, place, solution for this guy. Name a solution for this guy. Don't give him more problems. No, I can't do it today. Fuck that. Don't even say anything about today. Just say the soonest we could take you. I really want to take care of you. I'd be happy to cut your hair. The soonest I could take you is Monday at, at 10 a.m. I could put it in here right now for you if you want. You've just provided a complete solution, but also what you've done. Also what you've done is you've made him feel like he cares about you. And hopefully the feeling that he is left with is, you know what? This is a good place. No wonder they're so busy. They're busy because they're good and they really cared about trying to get me in. And he even offered that if somebody canceled, if I left my number, that maybe he could call me. You provide solutions. You don't provide more no's, you provide solutions. Whether you can or you can't, you provide solutions. You can always do that. What is in your control is that. So, I'm sorry if I was too harsh, if I was too harsh on some people, but man, that shit really gets me going. What's up, Daniel? Thank you for, uh, Daniel Dickens, thank you for being a member. He said, what's up, Eddie? First live because I'm, uh, I'm puking and not at the shop today. <laughs> man, I hope you feel better, dude. I hope you feel better. Robert Salazar, what's up, brother? It's 6.30 a.m. out here. And uh, the shop, hold up, hold up, hold up. The shop door says it opens at 10 a.m., but it's time to change my ways, man. Thank you for your inspiration. Peace. You know what, man? Crash reported ahead. Crash reported ahead. How about that? Now, but you know what, man? I'm going to tell you something. When I worked at the factory and, and life was really miserable, I only could work one day a week at the shop. I could only work one day a week at the shop. So I was trying to maximize as much money as I could make because I wasn't making dick at the factory. I was making nothing. In fact, I was making, I'll tell you, $620 every other week. That's how low it was. So when I went in on Saturday, which was the only day I could work because outside of my factory schedule, that was the only day I could work. I would go in at 5 a.m. Now, I know it sounds crazy because at first there wasn't nothing going on at 5 a.m. I would go in there at 5 a.m. I would try to knock out some videos, come up with some ideas. But I would wake up at 5 a.m. because I knew ultimately that if I got there early enough and I started to advertise that time, before you know it, that was the hottest time there was. And don't think for one second that clients were in there taking advantage of me because it was 5 a.m. In fact, they were nothing but appreciative. They appreciated the fact that I came in so early, that my grind was so strong, that in fact, two of them, two of them offered me serious money to start my own shop. When they seen the amount of work, attention to detail, and concern that I put in by coming in that early, they were like, they were like, this dude's a grinder. This dude reminds me of myself. This dude is a guy who's going to make it. He'll have his own shop one day. They knew that. They felt that. And everybody paid usually double, sometimes triple, sometimes more. So many of the times, now mind you, I got in at five, everybody else was showing up at nine, six, seven, eight, nine, all right? That's four hours of me cutting hair. And many times by the time 9 a.m. rolled around, I had, I had like $300 in my pocket by 9 a.m. What other job? What other job? They, like, that's what I love about this business. What other job could it be 9 a.m. and you already got $300 in your pocket? Not many of them. Not many jobs are like that. I'm telling you guys, appreciate this shit because the moment you don't have it or the moment you can't do it or the moment something happens to you and you can't do it, you're going to be wishing. You're going to be wishing that you appreciated it when you could have. You're going to wish and you say, you know what? I wish, I, I wish that I would have taken it more seriously. I wish that I would have done these things. But how about instead of wishing and waiting for all that shit to happen, you just start doing it today. You know what? I appreciate the work I put in. I'm glad I went and I'm glad I became a barber. I'm proud of what I am. I'm happy for what I do. I'm not going to confuse it with my identity. Barbering is not who I am. Barbering is what I do. I could, always raise, I could always raise myself up to greater levels. I could always continue to push the needle. But do it today. Don't wait to start appreciating this shit till you can't do it. Or till you give up and you find yourself in a position like I did and you're in, a, you're in a horrible situation, you're not making no money and you lost all your customers. Don't do that. Don't wait till it's too late. Appreciate it today. 
So for all you guys who are out there sitting in shops with nothing to do, sitting in shops waiting for customers to come, sitting in shops cutting out early, showing up late, fucking up and you know you are, Look at yourself in the mirror. Just be honest with yourself. Conduct an audit and say, you know what? What are the things I? What are the things that are in my control that I can change? All right. And number one is we're going to utilize our downtime. There won't be much downtime. Trust me, I did it myself. I did it myself. I'm speaking from experience. There ain't going to be much downtime when you use your downtime for the right things. Get a computer. Start making posts. Get a camera. Start taking pictures. Work don't stack up to other people. Who cares? Nobody comes. Who cares? You got to have that mentality. You got to have that mentality. You got to shrug it off. Client goes to somebody else. Who cares? Still greet them. Still treat them like you you care. Still, still act like you're an owner. Put yourself in that position and you'll be an owner one day. Treat the shop like you own it. You'll own one one day. Guarantee. Treat the shop like you're a worker. Act like a worker. Act like a guy who wants to work for the rest of his life. Well, that's what the fuck's going to happen to you. So you get in there and you treat it like you own it. Customer stops going to you, goes to somebody else. It's all good, man. How you doing, Joe? Good to see you today. How is everything? He sits down with somebody else. Don't care. Money stays in the shop. Let it go. Your customer and your empire is not built on one person. So forget about it. Your work don't stack up to other barbers so you don't want to take pictures. Who you advertising to? The other barbers? You trying to get other barbers to come get fucking haircuts from you? They ain't going to come get haircuts from you. They cut each other's hair. So what the fuck is that about? The average person doesn't have a million barbers on their feed posting these beautiful haircuts, photoshopped and all this shit. They ain't got time for that shit. They're out here looking at women. They're out here looking at shit they care about. They're out here watching golf videos and shit like that. They don't give a shit about haircuts until it's time to get one. So post your work. Post your work. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? Like, get over it. Unless you're advertising to barbers, post your work. If you're advertising to barbers, I get it. You're selling a product, you're selling a service, you're selling a clipper. Good for you, man. Post that work that makes sense for you to post. But if you're just sitting behind a chair and you ain't busy, take a picture with your clippers, post it. Post in process, post selfies with the stuff. Show yourself at the shop, post a picture of the shop. There's a million ways that you can get this done and a million people before you have done so. Follow the blueprints, baby. Follow the blueprints and make it, make it happen. That's what I'm saying. I'm giving you guys stuff that you could put into practice today. You could put in this you could put this into practice tomorrow. So, at the end of the day, if nobody comes, who cares? I'm stronger than that. If nobody comes, I got to believe in myself, right? I got to believe in myself because you know what when I started this YouTube channel, it was a lot of people in my own circle. A lot of people in my own circle that doubted me. Man, why are you buying computers? You're spending all this money on cameras, man. You know, there's so many people doing it. How could, how could you do something any different? You know, you, you're just throwing your money away. But you know what? That shit made me want to do it more. I didn't give a fuck what they said. It really didn't influence me too much, but it made me want to do it more. It made me want to get better at this. I wasn't nobody special. I didn't have experience with cameras or editing or computers or any of this shit. I hardly even used them. I hardly even used them. So I was, I was totally lost when I sat down to get started, but I knew inside that I was going to figure it out because I cared about it. I cared about it enough to say, you know what? All right, I'm not where I want to be, but every day I'm going to get a step closer. Every day I'm going to get a little bit closer. And that's the mindset that you got to adopt. You know what? I don't care what nobody says because inside I believe what I'm going to do is going to work out and look at it now. You know what I'm saying? All the people who didn't believe me. And a lot of these people are going to be in your circle, man. A lot of these people are going to be friends and people that you know and people in your neighborhood who ain't doing shit with their life. And they're looking at you like, haha, did you see Ed's got a YouTube channel? Haha, did you see, you know, he's putting himself out there. His shit looks stupid. It looks terrible compared to other people. Like, you know, I just don't see it ever going anywhere. Like, you know, that's the talk they're going to have. But me? Was I listening to that shit? Fuck no, I didn't listen to that shit. I care less what they thought. I just thought, you know what? Wherever I'm at, I'm comfortable with it, and I know I'm going to get better. Next year, three years, four years from now, the content will get better and better and better. And you know what? I'm not really worried about nobody else. I'm just worried about working on where I'm weak, staying in that three zone, that that uh, seven habits of highly, highly successful people. I'm staying in that zone of discomfort. I'm staying in that zone of trying to learn, trying to grow, trying to implement. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, 
That's really the only thing that matters. That's really the only thing that matters. Because every day that you decide not to do some shit, like let's say you decide to leave the shop early because nobody came. You decide to say, fuck it, I'm going to go do some important shit in your life that's not that important and we both know it, like playing video games or some dumbass other thing. Oh, we need to do some important shit, so I'm going to cut out early. For every fucking day that you do that, every day that you do that, there's somebody who doesn't. Every day that you skip practice, there's somebody who's practicing. Every day that you skip school, there's somebody who's studying. Every day that you do something stupid, there's somebody doing something smart. Somebody who wants it more than you. And you tell yourself, I'm a grinder. I look at myself in the mirror and I think, I'm a grinder. I do this, I do that. But then you look at yourself and you're like, why am I drinking seven beers at night? Why am I, why am I sitting around doing nothing? Why am I going to bed at nine? Why am I, uh, why am I playing these stupid ass video games for, for 50 hours a week? When I could be at it, like imagine what 50 hours a week dedicated to something positive would be. But if we're just honest with ourselves, why am I watching so much TV? How many hours of TV am I watching? How many shows have I binged? How many dumb fucking things am I doing? Be honest with yourself. You only got yourself. Don't go around telling that story to everybody. Oh my God, you know, I just don't got time to work out. I just don't got time to do that shit. You know, Mr. Eddie Barbie says all these things, but I don't have time for that. Bitch, wake up at 5 a.m. See what kind of time you got. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate you. Wake up and get that shit done. Adopt a better mind state. Don't talk about the things you ain't got time for. Solutions. Talk about the solutions. All right, you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed this live as much as I have. You guys made me feel good. Got it off my chest. Let's read some of these comments. All right, man. Hey, Reggie. What's up, man? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, Amber, let's go back to Amber. Thank you for being a member. Thank you for being a member, Big T. He says, uh, oh, and Ivy Max in here too. He said, Eddie, dropping them big nuggets, man. I appreciate you. He said, I'm proud of you, Eddie. That's true, my brother, my brother, Chris, Chris Aller, uh, Kevin. He said, treat the shop like an owner and you'll be an owner one day. Thank you for the words of wisdom. Now, Amber, uh, hair by Amber, thank you for being a member. She says, I can't wait till I'm able to work as long as I want. Right now, unfortunately, I have a youngin that's still in daycare and my grind is a little different. It's all good because Amber, think about it. That's not downtime that's, that's useless. You have to do that. What is the point of doing any of this? Really, what is the point of getting up and going to work and doing any of this if it's not to support your family? So you got to do right by your family. You got to do right by your youngins. So at the end of the day, that's not part of your downtime. That's not time that you're screwing off. That's time that you're doing something extremely important. You know what I mean? Extremely important. So there are times where you have downtime and you're doing bad things with it. Sure, sure, that happens to all of us. But that's not part of it. So you grind when you can and enjoy your kids, man. Because there ain't no thing in this earth that's more important than supporting your family. What's it all for? Reggie's in the house. I see that. Spirit said, dang, real talk, much needed. Eddie, thanks. I appreciate you, man. Uh, Paige says, you got to start at some point or die having regrets. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about. He said, wisdom and a Bills fan. Good info. I'm here. Bills Mafia in the house. Preach it, preach it brother. Timmy B. All right, I appreciate you guys all. I really do. And, uh, you know, I hope that you guys could take some of this stuff and uh, put it into practice. You know, it, it isn't always easy. Sometimes it's a slog. Sometimes it's a grind. Uh, but as long as as long as you're trying, as long as you're making an attempt and as long as you're just yeah, making adjustments, not excuses. Thank you, Chris. As long as you're as long as you're actually able to just be honest with yourself and just say, like, all right, let's just look at my week. What's my week consist of? How many hours am I watching TV? Am I playing video games? Am I drinking? Am I going out? Am I doing all these things that are not moving the needle the way that I want them to? And what little changes could I put in place? And, you know, I'm just going to tell you one little one before I go. One, one little one that I really feel like is just, it's just helped me a lot. It's just working out in the morning. Having that accomplishment under my belt, that one thing that I did that I wasn't lazy, whether I wanted to be there or not, I showed up. I feel like that that has really bred success and it's and it's kind of spilled over into other areas of my life. So, you know, if you don't work out, things like that, I, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm not telling you to get in shape or any, any of these other reasons. I'm just saying for the mental, the mental clarity that it brings, the way that I feel, the earned endorphins, uh, the, the earned dopamine. That's what I'm talking about. He said, uh, Robert Salazar said, yes, spirit. Here's a couple of dollars for the cause. 
Have a good, have good. All of them picks and vids are in the making. I'll post soon. Eddie, the fader blade does it fit with the protege? The fade blade fits on the protege. Uh, Ivy Max says I lift weights while I watch TV. It's definitely doable. <laughs> I like it. I like it, man. You're doing something positive there, and that's that's really what matters right there. That's really what matters. So, all right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm gonna fight my way through this traffic jam and hopefully make it in time for my first customer. Uh, this is the YouTube Barber Academy. I'm Mr. Eddie Barber, and I'm out of here. Peace.